Hey! Time is up! You are dead! Hey, what? Shit! Alarm! Heal! Go go easy. You're finished. Almost as good with that as This must be Meret's horse. He neglected to tell me his customers were bandits. Ah, I see you. What? I walked into.
You're back! Well, look at this! You failed to mention it was in the possession of bandits. Slipped my mind. Hmm. Good. Stronger than mine. I thought you said it was yours. <laughs> yes, yes, of course it is. You've done good by me, my friend. Then you'll deliver as promised. My word is my word. But I have one more thing to ask of you. Ah, I'm done with your games. All right. The hyena lives in a cavern just over those hills. Day and night she roams the desert collecting silica, precious teardrops of the gods. What has happened to those who have interfered is best left unsaid. If I find you've led me on another futile chase, it won't be my words that hit your ears. A thousand promises. I have no reason to defy you. Don't die out there!
So this is the hyena's lair. No sign of Khaliset, though. Mered was telling the truth. I need to figure out where she went. I do not want to die! Mercy! Thank you, Magi! The hyena! Where is she? I do not know. I am... I'm the only one left. She took the others away hours ago. Took them where? She kills them! I know it! She... She... Her hands! Oh, gods! Her hands are so bloody! Peace, friend. You are free. I will deal with Haliset. Where is Haliset taking captives? And why? Now why would one of her loyal beasts be caged? Fu's tomb. She has detailed every crevice. Ah, she has not finished. That is where I will find her. I will head to the pyramids. Oh. 
Hyenas. Halistat must be inside. Her. A Magi who has treaded many dunes to find you. Hide if you must, Hyena. But this tomb will not protect you. I demand that you stop here. Turn back now and I will excuse this intrusion. Siwa was an intrusion. Man, I am Eset, possessor of magic. The gods live here, not you. What sort of mischief is she entertaining? <clears throat> be gone! Osiris cannot be disturbed. This trap door. What is it protecting? Heathen! The wakeful one is asleep! Will drench these arid plains with your blood. What is this place? A tomb beneath a tomb. Is this where you hide, hyena? Some madness happened here. A dark place with a window to the gods. What kind of ritual is she performing? Still warm. And the ceremonial knife. This was a sacrifice. Hmm. Alisa drew these symbols here. Was she trying to figure out their meaning? This sarcophagus is decorated with goddesses of the mother. Strange symbols are marked all over it. Offerings to Osiris, protector of the dead. I think I know what Dark Deeds Haliset was after here. Haliset was doing a ritual. She began by calling to Osiris with these offerings. She used a knife to sacrifice her captives. She collected their blood for some dark purpose. She was attempting to learn these strange symbols. She must have found them in this room. Once she knew the symbols, she carved them here and ended the ritual with one final prayer over the sarcophagus. Haliset must be trying to bring someone back to life. But just who is buried down here? Child. My child! You lost your child. I haven't. Her rest is temporary. You have intervened on her reawakening. And yet you aligned yourself to the order. Ravage this tomb. Hyacinth! Don't you dare say my name! 
My name does not merit your lips, you who have dishonored her. I am a good mother. You're no match for me, desert scum! Retransmission, segment three. Acquiring contemporaneity. Come and meet me, coward! It has been 95 days since the great catastrophe. The messenger speaks. You must be wondering why I have reached out to you. It was written, you see, that you would come to this particular chamber at this very moment in time. The walls told us of your coming when we once were. Look at them. Are they not fascinating? One of your... Look of your... These walls tell of a tragic story. A story we transcribed on our structures, on our artifacts. A story we cannot alter. A mystery defying this in plain sight. We tried. Our scholars and scientists, poets and physicists, bright minds, rebellious hearts. They all tried so hard to bring about change. They, we all failed. None could change what we discovered, the stories written into the walls of these rooms. By whom, we never knew. We know they tell of the future that is, the future that was, and the future that is yet to come. The Zeros? We failed at modifying the line. We failed at adding a single dot. It was clear. We were to be messengers at best. But messengers to whom? To you. We removed our ability to read those stories from your original template. A doorway that is also a puzzle. We must find the solution. Those were Brutus's words when he visited the vault under the Colosseum more than 2,000 years ago. He drew the vault, sketched it to the best of his abilities, but he could not see. Just as you are blind, you may read your watch, you may read hourglasses and calendars, but you cannot grasp beyond that simplistic surface. For now, the true reading of time still escapes you. And so today, the curtains pulled and the eros is shown. Tragic and complete. Those walls you might never read. Events yet unfold as written. But something, anything must change. You do not understand what is at stake. The reader has no power. He is but an observer. But the author? The author invents the future. The author owns the future. A future where zeros are avoided. 
A future where a loved one can be revived by the drafting of a new chapter. A future where humankind is more than it is today. A future where, just perhaps, we can all still exist together. different than any of the others who have come before you. Come, fight me if you must. Then your blood will be part of my daughter's resurrection. I will bury you in the sand, fool. Sandstorm coming. Uh. Now I will show you what happens to those who desecrate my daughter's tomb. Impossible, Hali said. No measure of magic can bring our children back. <clears throat> Must keep my bearings. Gods need not be involved. You have infringed upon Ishe's place of rest, trespasser. You cannot defeat me, Medjay! Come and face me!
Do I walk among the dead now? A just end. You defiled the dead and enabled the people who killed my son. All on a selfish whim. No. I gathered the silica for them. It powered the magic stone of those who came before. You saw it, didn't you? These symbols only needed to be learned. It is not meant for us. It makes no difference now. I wanted to protect my daughter in life and death. I have done neither. Osiris! Please grant me reunion. She walks alone in the field of reeds. Am I to remain in the Duat Laeva? I just want my daughter back! May you find your daughter in the afterlife, Khaliset. May the Lord of the Duat guide you. Hey! Get the fuck out! Shit! Got you!
into.
So long, and thanks for all the fish, Berkeley. March 21st, 2006. The day Layla Hassan drops out of college. That's right, Professor Moore. I'm not finishing that Jane Eyre paper. I got a job, and I'm headed to Philly next week. This whole classroom thing, it's not for me. Mom and Dad are freaking out, but they'll accept it. I'll be working towards something real, making real money, and I'll be closer to home. Not that I'll visit any more often. Sophia promised there would always be a place for me at Absurgo, as long as I show them what I can do with a circuit board and a pair of pliers. Sure, I'll have to work my way up to a place on her special project, but that doesn't matter. It won't be long before she or her father, Mr. Alan Rickin, notices what I'm capable of and asks for my help on the Animus. I swear, I get more done reading the latest copy of Wired on the toilet than the rest of the guys do all day in the lab. I mean, the body band? Really? If people can't take a walk on their own, they aren't going to listen to a watch that tells them to do it either. This is all so pointless. I should just go back to... Wait, that's probably what the body band would tell me to do. What I should do is build something that will simultaneously blow people's minds and the doors off the Animus Project. Nothing at Abstergo Fitness is going to be big enough for that. I'm bored as hell. But there's nothing like boredom to stimulate creativity. Yep. I think the body band needs a little adjustment to its language processing program. The right decision always feels like home. My stuff's the same. My locker smells the same. It's like I never left. But I did. And I can never unlearn what I know now. How will it change my work at the Historical Research Division? Hard to say. All I know is that it will. Our Dom booked us a lunch. Nothing fancy. She wanted me to meet Deanna Geary, my new medical officer. She looks like she was born in the middle of a cornfield, but she seems okay. I can't believe she left homemade cookies on my desk. I don't know why I told her about getting stood up last weekend. I never talk about personal stuff at work. At least it seems like I can trust her. You need that to stay alive in the field. Too bad most of Abstergo's tactical units don't consider trust a priority. Aho, the portable animus. No mention in the official credits, but all those emails, all those middle-of-the-night phone calls from Madrid, there's a lot of me in there. Sophia, if I'd known you just wanted to strip mine my brain and leave me in the dark, I never would have followed you. Go away! There's no candy here! Nothing in life is ever free. Ever. The Animus. I can tell. I know it wouldn't have worked without my advice. Just look how they did the heat sink. The VRMs, the high amperage rating by transistor. It was me who told them it would offset failure of the... What's this? Hello there, DNA reader module. Are you ringing my doorbell? Maybe there's some candy here after all. I've come to the conclusion that Sophia is shit at hiring staff. The entire Madrid facility. Ugh. How do they not see it? It would be so easy. You just have to parse the genetic memory input and work from smaller data pools. You could even process incomplete samples and still create a reliable model for high levels of synchronization. The reader module and the decryption software would need an update, but it's doable. Madrid's probably congratulating themselves just for getting this far. Meanwhile, I'm partying with some congealed veggie curry, three plasma screens, a disassembled animus, and Raw Victoria's debut album on loop. Sahete. Dee will be mad when she sees how I use Milton's DNA, but what did she expect when she asked me for help? I needed someone's genetic profile to test the Animus, and, well, his was right there. All in the name of science. I like morning briefings. They're short, minimal nonsense, and they have free coffee. No downtime this week. They're putting me and Dee on a plane to Alexandria two days from now. I don't get why Hathaway's in such a rush. We're being deployed to extract an... 
artifact. If it were a person of interest, the push would make more sense. A person could be halfway across the world in a couple of hours. But an artifact that's been sitting around for 2,000 years, it's not going anywhere. An artifact of high interest. Heard that before. It always ends up being some crappy pottery shard or half an old book. My animus runs on DNA, not tableware. It'll be strange visiting Egypt for the first time since 2013. Back then I went looking for my roots and found trouble instead. It's good that Dee's coming. She always keeps me from doing anything too stupid. Turns out, the artifact of high interest is also a person of interest. A mummy. And a golden opportunity. I've informed Dee of some changes I'm making to our assignment parameters. She acted mad, but I know she's eager to see my animus field tested. F Sergo won't mind. Well, they would if they found out. But they won't. <laughs> Hathaway's intel was a disaster. They have no idea what's going on with this extraction. Field tech is fun and all, but that's not why I left Berkeley. If the Animus lets me ride DNA this old, if the reader can model the missing codons and extrapolate the genetic memories that aren't mine, Sophia would lose her Abstergo. Abstergo will come to me on their hands and knees. My name will be right up there with Warren Vidix. Alameda Kidaminda. Too bad the Madrid facility got blown up. But I bet they'll build a new one soon. This one will be in Philly, and its lead engineer will be Leila Hassan. <laughs>